Hi everyone, my name is Jovian Belgard and I'm a solutions developer here at Snowflake and today I'll be walking you through how to use the Snowflake connector for Google Analytics. Here we have the quick start, the getting started with the Snowflake connector for Google Analytics quick start. Um, the quick start walks you through how to create your Snowflake environment and to set up uh, Google Analytics and BigQuery and also some authentication steps so that we're able to connect with the connector. And so here we will start with step nine here in the quick start. So here we're in the Snowflake marketplace um, in Snowsite, and then we're going to search for the Snowflake connector for Google Analytics. And so once we're able to see the connector, we can click on it and click get and get to install. Once the connector has been successfully installed, we can go ahead and click configure. Once we click configure, we pull up this um, installation wizard for the connector. Here on the first step of the configuration steps, we can scroll to the bottom of this page, click mark all as done and start configuration. Now on step two for configure connector, we can also scroll down to the bottom. Uh, these uh, selections will be pre-selected for you, so you can scroll down and click configure as well. On uh, the third step to authenticate to Google Cloud Platform, we uploaded our JSON file that has the client email and private key from, from Google BigQuery. And then once these two fields auto-populate, by dropping in the JSON file right in this box, we can click connect. So this fourth step here, um, which is validate source, this checks that um, we have access to the data inside the Google Cloud Platform. And so once we see this message successfully configured, we can click define data to sync. And once we do that here, um, we'll be able to then select the data that we want to synchronize from Google Analytics. And so right here, we can see under the data sync tab, it's not yet syncing because we haven't yet selected our data. So we're going to click this, um, in, in this example, in the quick start, we have this one data source here. So we're going to click that and then we're going to click start sync. Um, so our managed data synchronization that we're syncing their data currently right now, but the status is that our data has um, not yet been found since it is still syncing. On this page, we're able uh, to pause and restart the connector by clicking this button here. And we can also change the sync settings from, right now it's set to eight hours, but we can change it from 15 to 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, et cetera, with this uh, drop-down list. And so this will take several minutes for the status um, to change from data not found to then showing the last time the data was synced from uh, Google into Snowflake. Um, so once the data has um, finished syncing, um, this is what the status will look like right here. So the last sync was less than 20 seconds ago. Under the settings tab, we can see our connector objects, uh, the application, the warehouse, destination database, destination schema, and the, our role. And so, for example, if you want to see the warehouse, we can just click on go to warehouse. Um, it pops up here and then we can see that right here. Here we can also, under authentication, we can see how uh, our authentication, our secret, and our connection configurations here. And last but not least, we can also set up email alerts. So here we have our notebook that is part of the quick start and so we can download the notebook and import it into snowflake and so once we do that um, we'll able to run these cells so this cell here uh, labeled raw table output when it's run we can see the output from the raw data and for uh, this cell right here this query is able once it's run we're able to see um, the output from the flattened data and what you're seeing here is the data, the raw data here that's been, it's been uh, saved into a view. And so um, and this, in this view, we can see uh, and inspect our data a little bit more closely. So right now we have data from uh, websites 
that show user engagement, whether a user views the page or they scroll on the page um, when they start their session or if it's their first visit. And so we can see, for example, here in the event names page view scroll page uh, user engagement, we can see the date of the event and, our, and the timestamp. Um, further inspecting our inspecting our data, we can see if a user um, how they accessed the website. So here we see this user used an iPhone to access the website. And if we keep scrolling to the right here, we can see that they use a Safari browser and where they accessed it from, where, which location. It looks like it was, um, for example, in the first um, record, we see that this user was uh, located in San Carlos when they had accessed the website. Here we have our Streamlit and Snowflake dashboard that we can see our user engagement uh, by country. We can view the, the full data set down here. And if we can continue to scroll down, we can also view the behavior metrics um, to see like uh, the page views and the top five websites that were visited. And so this all of this data here can be filtered by uh, user ID or and by the start uh, and end time like throughout the day. And so here we can see for this particular user, we they were able to access the uh, website from uh, Canada. And we also have the event date and what they actually did. They um, they view the page, they had a session start as well, and here's their behavior metrics. And it looks like on uh, for this user, they had four visits to this website right here. We can go back and um, we can filter by time as well. So we can just view the full data set. Let's uh, change the start time. And so here we see the data changes based on the time and um, the user ID as well, um, if applicable. And uh, we can see the changes to the user engagement, um, the data set and behavior metrics and the top five websites that were visited. Thanks for watching.